The other scenario we're gonna have dealing with electric potential is something where we have electric potential within a constant electric field. So that's gonna be created when we have uh, something called a capacitor, and we'll deal with that a little bit later in the unit. Um, but what that has is a plethora of positive charges on this side and a plethora of negative charges on this side. What that's gonna do is that's gonna create an electric field that is uniform. So the density of my field lines are, stays the same to show that the electric field is constant, right? You might have a little bit of fringe field here on the ends, but for the most part, our electric field is constant when you're within those two plates. So what does electric potential look like? Well, usually these are connected to a battery and that battery is gonna provide some potential difference. For here, we'll call it uh, two volts. So what does the electric potential look like inside there? What that means is, essentially, if this has a voltage of two volts, this would have a voltage of zero volts. That's one option that would work. Another option that could work would be if this had a voltage of positive one volts, and this has a voltage of negative one volts. That's still a potential difference of two volts. And what I could do is I could find the voltage at certain positions based upon how far apart these two plates are spread. So the distance apart and their potential difference can give me the equation for the electric field, which is the potential difference of the voltage divided by the distance separated they are apart. I think the AP actually has it listed like that, okay? Now, how can we use that here? Um, and so what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to show this middle is zero volts. We'll say this is 0 0.5 volts. So this is negative 0.5 volts for my equal potential lines. Notice again, my equal potential lines are perpendicular to my electric field lines, okay? So how can I use this? Why is this useful in understanding when we have charges that are going to move? If we have a positive charge here or a proton, right? What is going to happen? This proton is naturally going to move in this direction. And so what we are going to be looking at is what is the motion going to look like, right? And, and we can use the idea of the energy as well to help us with that, okay? So uh, the energy is going to be symbolized with U. The energy is going to equal the charge times the voltage, right? Remember, this is energy per unit of charge. So to find energy, we need to multiply those two together. Right? That would give me my energy in joules because we had coulombs times joules per coulomb. Coulombs cancel out and we're left with joules. So what I can see is what's the change in energy? Right? The equation we're going to use is this. The change in energy equals the charge multiplied by the change in potential. So in this circumstance, the proton is naturally going to go from this position to hitting the negative plane, right? So my change in potential, or my, yeah, my change in energy is going to equal the charge times my change in potential. Negative one minus negative 0.5. So my change in energy is going to equal 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 times 0 0.5 volts. And that can give me my energy. That value would be 0 0.8 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. Not a lot of energy, but again, can help us with the understanding of now, if I wanted to know if we release this positive charge there, well, how fast is it going when it actually hits this negative plate? Because what this is, this is a loss of potential energy. And if we lose potential energy, we also gain kinetic energy because our energy is conserved. So both of these are this value. So if I have an initial velocity of zero, what's the velocity here when it actually hits? 
And I can do that then by saying, well, my velocity is, I can solve that by knowing that kinetic energy is one half mv squared. I know the gain of kinetic energy, so then my velocity is simply going to be two times my kinetic energy divided by my mass, square root, which my kinetic energy was my charge times my change in potential. So I can say that's two times Q times delta V over M square root. And that's how fast the positive charge is gonna hit the plate. So here's what we see. If that positive charge had started here, it's gonna hit the plate faster because my delta V is bigger. Now it's a change in potential of one volt instead of just a half. If it started here, it also would hit faster. If it started here, it hit the fastest because my delta V would have been the largest. If I had a negative charge here, it would have moved this way. And I can again find speed and the change of energies, right, based upon this equation that we have here. Another example that you might use with this is if we had a negative charge that we started here, right? That negative charge isn't going to move anywhere. It's already where it wants to be. It's repelled from this negative side and it's attracted to this positive side. So what a question might ask is, well, how much work, how much effort, how much energy do we have to use in order to get that negative charge back to here, right? If I wanted to move it against what it naturally wanted to do. If I wanted to lift something up, how much work would I need to do that? Uh, so what we're doing here is we're still changing the potential energy, right? We're going from zero potential energy to a high potential energy for a negative charge. Remember, a negative charge naturally wants to go from a low potential to a high potential, okay? Well, so here's some things that we can know. This is our equation, change in energy equals charge times change in voltage or change in potential. What we also know is that work is a change in energy. So however much work I do, that's how much energy I change because they are both the same, right? Work is measured in joules and so it is energy. Work is force times distance and that still gives me a change in energy. So if I'm asked for the force, or I'm asked for the distance that things move, I can still use this equation because the idea is not only is it a change in potential energy or a change in kinetic energy, it is also how much work can be done.